The Lumia 950 Duo was basically declared dead on arrival by practically everyone who reviewed it, because even a fantastic camera couldn't make up for the seriously broken software, especially at that price. However, Microsoft had more than half a year to work on those issues, so you might wonder how far they got and why I switched from Android and made the 950 my daily driver. I'm Martin from TechAltar, and let's talk about that. What suddenly made the 950 worth talking about is discounts. I bought mine in Hong Kong for about 340 USD with some free accessories, and that means a massive more than 200 USD discount. Similar deals and buy one, get one for free offers are all over the place. And this way the 950 is suddenly priced like a mid-range smartphone, and that changes a whole lot. But let's talk about the most obvious question first whether you should want Windows on your smartphone or not. And I'm afraid to about 98% of the population, the answer is simply, no, you should not. The OS itself is now pretty slick and does most things competitors can do, but if you're like most people and you don't want to spend your time finding workarounds to missing apps, and don't want to find out that half the wearables, like my beloved Pebble for example, don't work on the platform, then you are simply better off with Android or iOS. Sure, there are a few great Windows Phone apps and third-party apps to replace some of what's missing, but there's also a lot that is still nowhere to be found. And yet I think some of you might like this experience exactly because of the OS, or rather because of what it could become one day. Windows 10 Mobile is basically the biggest beta testing party around, and while that might sound like hell to a lot of people, to me, as a smartphone enthusiast, it's heaven. Well, mostly anyway. So if you love polished, final stuff, then stay away from this. But if you prefer seeing progress, then here is where it's at. If you've ever beta tested anything, you know what is needed for a fun experience. First, an ambitious goal, something to look forward to and expect at the end of testing. And I've made a whole video about how I think Microsoft is trying to get Windows phones to replace your PCs in the future through Continuum and Universal Windows apps. You can check out that video somewhere here, and yeah, that's as ambitious as goals get, and I happen to really like that direction. Second, you'll need steady progress, and while the platform definitely has a lot of catching up to do, I'll be honest, I'm constantly surprised by how much progress there is. The 950 is my first Windows phone, and it went from being a terrible buggy mess to being about as reliable as most Android phones I've had. Also, there are frequent system updates, and a huge anniversary update is coming on the 2nd of August, which will bring a lot of new stuff with it, like mobile payments, for example. Apps are definitely the biggest issue, but here too I see more development than I expected, and I think the Universal platform is already helping a lot. Every few days a new interesting app shows up or gets a big update or often gets turned into a universal Windows app. You know, that's when developers only have to make an app once and it can run on your phone, on an external monitor connected to your phone, or on your PC, or soon even on your Xbox, simply by adjusting its layout. This will need some more work, but it already feels like the future. Third, you'll need a painless updating process, and if you have an unlocked 950 like I do, You'll get all updates directly from Microsoft as soon as they come out, and you can even choose how beta you want to be. Beyond the production builds, which I simply see as the most stable beta, there are three so-called Windows Insider rings. And the higher you go, the buggier but up to dater it gets. So everyone can choose how crazy they want to be and still get updates smoothly within their own ring. That's pretty awesome. The last piece of the puzzle is efficient communication, and thankfully Microsoft is fairly good at collecting and acting upon feedback from insiders and communicating changes too, which is nice. Overall then, the Windows 10 mobile experience is pretty awesome if you enjoy your software in beta, that is. It's ambitious, and you have the feeling that things are progressing rather quickly and most of the time even into the right direction. I generally like the way it looks and feels, with little things like the awesome keyboard with the brilliant cursor dot thingy, which is like a reincarnation of the red ThinkPad cursor, just a little bit better. Or the system-wide choice for dark and light themes, for example, because I think every AMOLED screen deserves black backgrounds. But of course, it's not all rosy. 
I do wish, for example, that Microsoft's very own experimental app developers called the Microsoft Garage would spend more time on their own platform rather than those of iOS and Android. Not nice, Microsoft. Not nice at all. Other than the platform itself, the Lumia 950 checks most of the boxes for a phone priced below 400 USD. The 5.2 inch QHD AMOLED screen is among the best you'll find on any smartphone. It doesn't disappoint from any angle and it gives the phone a pretty comfortable size too. Last year's Snapdragon 808 and 3 gigs of RAM means this phone is not for you if you're looking for extreme mobile gaming, but everything else plays just okay. The system is reasonably snappy and especially for the price, it's more than adequate. Battery life is on the good side of average, and I barely ever have trouble getting through the day, plus the battery is removable, hooray, and while fast charging heats up the battery considerably, it does indeed get the phone charged quite quickly over that sweet, sweet USB Type-C port. Type-C is also really catching on now, and before long, you'll be happy that you didn't make a two-year commitment to the older micro-USB standard. The best part of the 950, though, is undoubtedly its camera. It starts with the dedicated camera button, which I absolutely love, and it continues with the awesome camera app that is fast, takes excellent pictures with automatic settings, and also comes with one of my favorite manual modes of any smartphone camera. Just so elegant. And of course, photos also turn out fantastic. At 20 megapixels, they have enough resolution to make any pixel peeper happy, Dynamic range is great, even without turning the fantastic HDR mode on. The very wide f1.9 aperture allows for some beautiful background blur, and together with optical image stabilization, it can produce low-light shots that are mostly sharp and free of noise too. Colors are mostly accurate, though a bit more saturated than in real life, which isn't ideal, but I honestly always think most people, including myself, prefer this over occasionally dull ones. Well, anyway, I look at it, photos are phenomenal. And videos don't lag behind too much either. Optical image stabilization makes the footage look a little bit wobbly, but the video quality is excellent, and Lumias probably still have the best microphones on any smartphone. So if you're vlogging with this, you can easily skip some cheap external microphones. Other than the mid-range front-facing camera then, the 950 can easily keep up with the best cameras found on Androids and iPhones, which is a huge deal because it is now basically half as expensive as most of those phones. In other words, this is the cheapest phone you can buy that has a really good camera. I've heard lots of complaints about the use of plastic on the back, which is understandable, since even cheaper phones are made of metal nowadays, but I don't actually think it's that simple. It's a choice of function over form. It allows you to add a micro SD card and swap a battery. It doesn't scratch or collect fingerprints much. It won't break easily, and if it does, you can just buy a new cover. If you add to that that most people I know, including me, use hideous cases on their metal phones anyway, then suddenly this plastic back isn't a big deal after all. Metal phones are so overrated. I do wish they paid a little bit more attention to the fit and finish though, as the plastic they chose creaks a little bit, and that metal camera ring is kind of stupid too, because that's the only part that you can't exchange, and it's also the only part that does scratch like hell. And then there are a few things that I'm not too impressed by. Iris scanning, just no. The Wi-Fi antenna is also weak, so it sometimes drops a connection while my two and a half year old Android still doesn't. And audio output isn't too impressive either, which goes for both speakers and earphones, by the way. But that's it. I think the Lumia 950 is a great phone for Microsoft enthusiasts and camera enthusiasts. If you find one on a discount and you like the platform, then you have my recommendation. Thank you very much for watching. I hope you enjoyed this video. If you did, give me a thumbs up. You can also subscribe to me if you want to see more or follow me on social media if you want to see even more. And thank you very much for watching. I'll see you in the next one.